So by the subject of this video, you know that no, we can't get along. We can't coincide, whether it's for the women's SmackDown Championship or for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. We just don't know how to get along. Queen's Crown is a joke of the tournament. And we're just breaking up tag teams. Welcome to another episode of Can We Talk to Wrestling? And we're starting... yesterday <laughs> with Kyle so um, first I'm going to say for all the new people I'm Kimmy so um, I review Raw and NXT and SmackDown and AEW I do it all but um, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about Kyle so if you did not see uh, Kyle is no longer a part of this network he left for personal reasons makes me very sad <laughs> I would be lying if I said that I totally didn't cry on Sunday when I found out um, but I am very grateful because it was actually because of Kyle that I actually came on this network and has literally taught me all these brand new things and I'm so grateful for him and I know that it's not a goodbye, it's just to see you later and um, I know that we tease each other and we make fun of each other and we know we fight all the time but you know we really are best friends and I wouldn't be at the podcast right now without him, and I'm very thankful for him. So, until the next one, my friend, thank you for everything. And in case he doesn't see this, I will actually send him this tomorrow. <laughs> but regardless, um, or you get to talk about Monday Night Raw. Start with Queen's Crown. So, if you kept track on Friday, the Queen's Crown tournament lasted three minutes. So, you had two matches, you had two matches on Friday, you had two matches today. The whole tournament as of right now, and it is 11.04 on Monday, has less than 8 minutes. With the longest match being Natalia versus Dewdrop for 2 minutes and 59 seconds. That's a problem. Um, <laughs> it sucks too because it's not the talent's fault, and especially on Monday Night Raw when it's a 3 hour show compared to a 2 hour show, like I can understand why you're going to rush some matches, but on a 3 hour show when you have a lot of time to use... This, to me, just doesn't make sense. So, let's talk about the first match. So, you have Shayna Baszler versus Dana Brooke, and I believe that match lasted 2 minutes and 22 seconds. So, obviously, Shayna won. Shayna, I believe, now that Liv has been eliminated, is the favorite to win the tournament. The match was bad. This was a rematch from last week. You, I don't know. You can't do this. Like, you can't hype that this tournament is coming and, you know, we're going to have the finals at Saudi and we're going to have two women's matches at Saudi for the first time ever and the tournament's going to be two three-minute matches. Like, that's just utterly ridiculous. And this is why Deva Bui is going backwards in her women's division. And the women's evolution does not exist in Deva Bui. It exists in every other promotion. Impact, Ring of Honor, AEW, any other promotion. It exists. Deva Bui, it's like, nope. So, there was the first match. The second match between Natalia and Dewdrop, I was actually kind of interested in because to me it made sense for both competitors to win. Obviously for Dewdrop to get some sort of leeway advantage because she is new to the roster and since she just recently split up with Eva to get that um, singles momentum. But then, you know, the commentators were hyping up the fact that, you know, King of the Ring or Queen's Crown is kind of in the heart name, you know, Owen Hart, Bret Hart. So I was actually really intrigued to see which way they were going to go with it and they went with Dewdrop, which kind of shocked me because I could have totally seen Natalia and Shayna being a quarter, a really good quarterfinal match. But, you know, Shayna and Dewdrop, I guess, makes sense storyline-wise because they, you know, they feud a little last week. Um, but this match lasted 2 minutes and 59 seconds with Dewdrop winning from a roll-up. You can't win. You really can't win. I'm really hoping that the match is this, um, the final match on Friday, which is Zelina and Carmella. Yeah, Zelina and Carmella. I'm hoping the Zelina Carmella, ooh, that's actually kind of interesting how that I think about it because they were, you know, they were partners. Uh, that didn't sink in until right now. So Zelina and Carmella should be interesting. And of course, uh, Shayna and Dewdrop, you just have to hope that these matches are longer because then we're just wasting our time. 
But King of the Ring, King of the Ring was actually really good this week. So you had exa well, except for the second match. You had Xavier Woods versus Ricochet in a banger. Like this match was so good and it really showed you what Ricochet can do and how underutilized Ricochet is on the main roster and how they should really use him more because he's super talented before you know his contract expires and he goes elsewhere. And Xavier won. This makes perfect sense. Xavier's probably going to win because, you know, he's been pitching for this tournament to happen. And it also does make sense, too, because Biggie and Kofi have both won world titles. And I'm not saying Xavier Woods is not world title material, but, like, okay. The New Day has two world titles under their belt and a kick in the ring. That's kind of successful. Um, so this match was really good. I was really excited. And, you know, they were hinting all night. Kevin Patrick kept asking, you know, Kofi and Xavier, like, oh, what's going to happen if you two are in the quarterfinal match next week? And they didn't answer. So it was like, okay, this makes perfect sense storyline-wise that Kobe is going to win and they're going to have this match next week and then we get to see like what truly happens. Like, are bygones be bygones? Um, are Kofi and Xavier going to split up? Like, what are we going to do? And Jinder Mahal wins. What? This was shocking because I didn't see Jinder going past round one. I don't think anyone saw him. And it's interesting too because I felt like Kofi and Xavier just made more sense and now I just have like this really bad feeling that Xavier's not even going to win next week and Ginger's somehow going to win King of the Ring. And I don't want that. I don't think anyone wants that. So we have to hope by all miracles that Xavier wins next week. So hope and pray. But the, see, the King of the Ring tournament, like it actually makes sense, you know, all the matches wise and it's going great. Well, they can do the same thing on the woman. But speaking of things that are also kind of stupid, they're breaking up Mansoor and Mustafa Ali. And I feel like they just became a tag team like two months ago, and they're breaking them up. So they were wrestling Cedric Alexander and Sheldon Benjamin, you know, the newly found her business. And the match lasted two minutes. Again, Raw was just filled with two minute matches this week. And, like, it, Ali was like, I'm done, I don't want to do this anymore. And Mansoor was like, really nice about I was like, you know, I'm just going to talk to him, you've just heated in the moment, it's fine. And Ali beat him up. So I'm assuming this is going to be the match at Crown Jewel. You know, Mansoor has, I believe, had a, a match at every single Saudi event since the first one. So his, you know, he's undefeated there, so it does make sense he is from there. So that's the match that's going to take place and Mansoor is probably going to win. But I really hope they do use Mansoor too because I definitely see him getting lost in the shuffle now that he doesn't have Ali. And Mansoor is a really talented person. You know, before he was drafted to Raw, he was 49-0, which nobody seemed to know until he came to Raw. So... I'm interested to see what happens to him on the main roster after Crown Jewel. And the key to Raw is no, we can't co we can't coexist, we can't coincide. So this usually happens every single paper. They do a storyline where somehow, some way, you have the champion and the challenger teaming together to wrestle. And not only did they have this, they had it for both the men and the women. Why? Isn't one pen enough? So I'll start with the men because that's how we actually started off Raw. It was Drew and Biggie, and you know Drew was talking about how this is his last chance to get the title before he gets drafted over to SmackDown. It's been 300 days, you know, since he's held the title. He really wants the title back. Like he wants to make it in back before he goes to SmackDown. And you know Biggie was like, well, like he made a nipple joke in there, which was really funny, like classic Biggie. And Biggie. We were saying that he was a prideful champion, he's gonna win, you know, whatever happens, happens at Crown Jewel. Then the Usos, for whatever reason, interrupted. This made no sense to me. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Draft. What, what's a brand split? And the Usos were, you know, who's gonna win, Biggie or Drew? Whoever wins this is gonna go on to Survivor Series or Russell Roman. We're looking out for our cousin. And they challenged them to a tag team match. So they did, so backstage, they did like the Mega Powers handshake, which I found really cool. And then we get to the main event, and things were going so well. And then Big E, like, Drew was like, I'm gonna more, and Big E's like, nope, not today, bro. Boom. And it, it just all fell apart, and it ended by DQ. <laughs> and then Big E and Drew were, like, brawling. And then somehow Drew got busted open. I think, like, he hit his head on the commentary desk too hard, and there's, like, a huge bump on his head, which I found really funny. I'm interested in this match just because I didn't expect Biggie to be in that position going into Crown Jewel. It should be really good, and you know, this is Drew's last title opportunity before he goes to SmackDown. I'm sure he'll wrestle Roman after Survivor Series. I definitely see that being the Royal Rumble 2022 match, but 
I don't know. But we all know, like, Drew and Roman's gonna happen. Don't worry. And all of this, oh, the moment. I, I, I can't even. So, they, so the really cool thing is, like, all four of them, so Sasha, ba uh, I almost said Bailey, whoa, Sasha, Bianca, Charlotte, Becky, they all cut promos throughout the night talking about, like, why they were going to win this tag team match. And so Sasha and Bianca came out first, and you saw that there was, like, tension, and then, like, Charlotte and Becky came out next, and then the match didn't even start because Char uh, Sasha and Bianca were fighting over who was going to start this match. And then Charlotte and Becky were just like, oh, whatever. So now everyone's brawling. And now Sonya the villain and Pierce were like, we're going to restart this match. This match hasn't even started. What are we restarting? The match that didn't start, like, okay. So then we go to a break, and then we come back, and now the tag match is going on, and now they're all fighting, and it goes by DQ. So I definitely see Charlotte getting added to this match at Crown Jewel. I think it just makes sense given what happened on Raw last night. I don't see why they wouldn't at this point. They love adding Charlotte to matches as we've seen in the past. But then it also fears me as to why, you know, the SmackDown Women's Champion was drafted to Raw. The Raw Women's Champion was drafted to SmackDown. I'm in fear that we're going to combine the belts again. And not saying that that's a bad thing, but I feel like now that you have, like, a draft and a brand split, and because the next pay-per-view is Survivor Series, it does not make sense to combine the titles, just because what are you going to do for the women's match? Is Becky going to wrestle herself? <laughs> like, don't think that's possible. So I'm intrigued to see what happens. They could obviously, like, not put a title on the line, but they probably are. It's going to be winner takes all. Because that's what WWE does. So... I don't know. Like, Raw definitely needs to, this, this, Crown Jewel needs to happen so I can see what WWE looks like after the draft. Because I can't even make, like, thoughts because they're just ruining my brain. <laughs> um, so yeah. So hopefully SmackDown's a little bit better even though.